ISIL militants are rapidly expanding in Africa. First off, in East Africa, Somalia's Prime Minister has warned the UN Security Council that Al-Shabaab militants are now affiliated to ISIL. Omar Sharmake was speaking at a special session of the Security Council. He told the Council that the recent pledge to join ISIL should not be taken lightly. He said tackling the crisis in Yemen is crucial to preventing ISIL from supporting al-Shabaab. Now, Yemen lies just across the Gulf of Aden from Somalia. Well, let's bring you more on that development now. Joined live from Mogadishu by CCTV's Abdulaziz Billo. Abdulaziz, firstly, just what more can you tell us about the supposed link between al-Shabaab and ISIL? Well, Lindy, just as you have said, the Somali Prime Minister expressed concern uh, that uh, the al-Shabaab uh, will uh, likely to have uh, more attacking capabilities once it merges with the ISIL militants uh, who are fighting in Syria and uh, Iraq. But all that we have uh, right now is that uh, the al-Shabaab here in Somalia says that uh, it is uh, still uh, an al-Qaeda proxy in the Horn of Africa and it has not shifted its alliance with the uh, uh, in shifted its alliance to join uh, the ISIL militants uh, rather. All that we know is uh, that uh, the spiritual leader of the al-Shabaab in uh, Galgala Mountains, this is in the Puntland region, Sheikh Mumin, he is the only commander so far who has pledged allegiance to ISIS. But uh, the vast majority of the al-Shabaab who operate in South Central Somalia have arrested a number of uh, fighters who wanted to pledge allegiance to ISIS and they're trying to control uh, the ISIS spread here in Somalia. They're saying that they are indeed an Al-Qaeda proxy and that they will still remain an Al-Qaeda proxy. So until the overall spiritual leader of Al-Shabaab, who is based in South Central Somalia, comes out publicly and declares that uh, indeed his group has abandoned the old master Al-Qaeda and uh, joined ISIS, it is going to be very hard for the fighters to be able uh, to shift and to join uh, this part of the country. The one thing that is uh, similar between ISIS and Al-Shabaab right now is that they're trying to topple the governments in uh, different parts of the world. ISIS is trying to topple the Iraq and the Syrian government, and the Al-Shabaab is trying to topple President Hassan Sheikh Mohammed's government here in uh, Mogadishu. So uh, uh, the, the, the other thing uh, that uh, uh, is making the Al-Shabaab stick more to Al-Qaeda and not join ISIS is because of the training and the funding and the overall support uh, that the Somali militant group Al-Shabaab has been receiving for years from uh, Ayman al-Zawahiri and uh, also Osama bin Laden, who was then the Al-Qaeda leader. So I don't think that uh, they will be able to shift uh, that quickly, bearing in mind that uh, they pledged their allegiance in 2012. Well, of course, as you mentioned, the historical link between al-Shabaab and al-Qaeda, but nevertheless, the Prime Minister of Somalia maintains a very worried stance on this matter, um, suggesting perhaps that one should certainly be keeping an eye on it. Now, Abdulaziz, does this mean that perhaps al-Shabaab might be getting weapons or even provisions, uh, if not presently, but possibly in the future uh, from ISIL? Well, indeed, that is be has become a major worry here, but uh, in, according to international security experts and uh, also security experts here in Mogadishu tell us, before ISIS is able to send uh, weapons or any other provisions to the Al-Shabaab here in Somalia, it has to have a secure base in the neighboring country that is Yemen. So, and we all know that Yemen is a stronghold of uh, the Al-Qaeda for years, and uh, that uh, there's very little ISIS influence there compared uh, to uh, Iraq and Syria. So unless ISIS has a strong uh, strategic base in Yemen that is going to allow them to send in ammunition, uh, weapons, and foreign experts and foreign fighters to Somalia, it's going to be hard for the Al-Shabaab to get any provisions so far from ISIS. But that is what the security experts are telling us. But also in Yemen, there is instability going on uh, there in, the, in that country. The Houthi rebels have toppled uh, the government in uh, the capital, Sana'a. The, the government controls only Aden, uh, the, they're the second uh, city in Aden. So th the, it is believed that the ISIS is indeed taking advantage of the, of the instability in that part of the country. Well, of course, an, another report that we are hearing, Abdulaziz, is uh, that the African, uh, it seems that we may have lost Abdulaziz below there. We do apologize uh, for that uh, technical uh, problem that we just experienced there. Well, now, ISIL, of course, does also have a presence uh, in West Africa, too, and that being with Nigerian militant group Boko Haram. The group threatens the entire region. That's including Chad and Niger, and Chad has responded by declaring a state of emergency after attacks there by militants. 
Chad has been instrumental in helping Nigeria retake much of the area uh, in northern Nigeria controlled by Boko Haram. But in recent months, the group has stepped up attacks in rural areas around Lake Chad. And that's as recently as an attack on Sunday in Chad and one on Monday in Cameroon. Now, ministers in Chad say authorities need sweeping powers to control the movement of people in the region. And that's why the state of emergency has been put in place.